anybody can do farming and anybody can uh, can do what we are doing and the most important thing is about uh, you getting resources asking the government for help or getting a loan begin with water and do what whatever you can because in in one acre you can turn your life upside down we are in the export french beans we don't sell them locally the demand locally is not as high as in europe and in america and other countries I had done a little bit of some research and I realized it's a crop that does very well. So I had to get a little bit knowing some friends who are doing it and they are the one who introduced me so much to it. Welcome again to Canaan Land in uh, Investment. This is a home for everybody and we, we love visitors. One of the things that I want to just in a nutshell to share with you is that any, every, anybody can do farming and anybody can, uh, can do what we are doing. And the most important thing is about uh, you getting resources, asking the government for help or getting a loan, begin with water, and do what, whatever you can, because in, in one acre, you can turn your life upside down. So the land we are in is one acre, and we have tried to do a lot of maximizing that one acre. And uh, as you can be able to see, one acre, you may look at it and you see maybe it's a small land, but you can do a lot of things. We have kept also cows, dairy cows, which are zero grazed, and uh, they give us milk. And also the byproduct of uh, what comes from cow is quite a lot because we also have biogas from the cows. And uh, we really enjoy because it gives us the gas and also it gives us the manure. Mm -hmm. And uh, it makes us you know, to be able to have our crops uh, getting the fertilizer from the cows and the chickens. And uh, it's quite a lot we can be able to do in one acre. Uh, here we are preparing the food for cows because as we told you, in our small one acre land, we do a lot of things. We put our dairy farms, that we have, uh, dairy cows, that we have put them under one place. And uh, here we are preparing their food. We plant maize in our land where we'll be going. We plant maize together with uh, sorghum. We mix together, then we make the silage. And uh, that is the major food. We, quite, we do a lot of uh, storage for our food because, you know, as uh, the environment here is very dry and we have to make sure whatever that we have just to keep us through the season so that we can be able to feed our cows and have milk throughout. We do quite a lot of smart farming. We have put our cows and uh, these cows are fresh and uh, are mixed with gansi. And our cows give us uh, milk. That is one of the byproducts of having cows in our home. And also from the cows, uh, they are refuse that they dung. Uh, we collect it, we put it in a place where it goes to our biodigester, where we have the biogas. And that's another one, the second byproduct of having cows in your home. Then uh, after that, when the gas has been removed, now we, have, we get the manure which goes to the farm that is ready prepared for fertilizer, manure for our farm, and that's what we do. Now 
now we are here in the farm where we do the French beans. And French beans is a very wonderful crop. We have planted it uh, just a week ago. Uh, and uh, French bean is a crop that only takes two months and then you are done with it. Uh, we are expecting to harvest it in the month of, of April up to removing of it. Uh, we realize agribusiness is one of the most important business here in this country and it can give you uh, your, your own business and your own work and your own good money. And we decided for us to be able to enter into agribusiness for the sake of having a good life, educating our children and be able also to advance our life. And we decided to venture into French beans and this variety that you have planted is called uh, uh, vanilla. Uh, we have planted just a week ago. So it's only one week, as you can see them, but they are coming up very well because of the climate. Uh, I came to learn about French beans from some of my friends that were doing it. I had done a little bit of some research and I realized it's a crop that does very well. So I had to get a little bit knowing some friends who are doing it and they are the one who introduced me so much to it. French bean is a crop that needs uh, good water uh, because some places you can grow it depending on rains but for us because we're in a dry place we have to do irrigation and uh, you have to have the water, the water source. For us we have a borehole and uh, for us to be able to plant it we have used a drip irrigation where we plant where when we put the drip irrigation we only put water where the seed is. don't do well so much in a wetlands a sort of but a, a little bit of where the water is uh, is uh, I can say is minimal because when the water is so much it destroys the beans because when the rains were so much the beans were not working well but now because the climate a little bit hot and a little bit cold it does well Um, French beans is not like other beans because other beans we plant them, we take care of them, then we harvest them, then they are used at the local market. But French beans, they are not like them because we harvest them at the point of the, of the, of the pods. When the pods now have come to a certain kind of a millimeter, that's where we harvest. And uh, we harvest French beans in two ways. There are those that we call super fine. Super fine, they are very thin uh, uh, beans, and they are, those are very expensive compared to the other ones that are called fine. Fine, they are a little bit, uh, a little bit thick, and uh, they are a little bit taller. So that's the difference. They're super expensive, the fine are not expensive. There's this area of management of French beans. French beans are high perishable uh, goods. Even from the time you plant them, they need quite a good of some care so that they can be able to grow and come to a position of harvesting. So as they grow up, we try our best because we are in the export. French beans, we don't sell them locally. The demand local is not as high as in Europe and in America and other countries. You can be an exporter. Uh, internationally and also locally, you can feed Kenya, you can feed the world just by one acre, or even have an acre, or even a quarter an acre. Whatever piece of land that you have, don't leave your land idle. Use it. Invest something in it. To be able to do French beans for export, French beans, you know, you cannot plant them and expecting the customers to come. You must have the market. And the market, you must have a, a company that uh, buys from you. So that's how we came to know the market. Some, we were introduced to the, to the buyers, uh, which are companies that are very credible in this country. And uh, we had to sign a tender so that every time our French beans are ready for harvest, they just come for them. For us, French beans we harvest twice a week. 
because of the, the as I say, they are highly perishable and uh, they grow. For us here in Kajiado, our French beans grows, they, they have like a two, 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 two times. In the morning up to the evening, then the night they continue to grow. So there is a way French beans can skip uh, a grade. Because if we're supposed to be harvested today for super, tomorrow it has to, to go for second grade. So we have to manage it. It really needs good management for French beans to be able to be in the Europe market. Uh, you can realize there's quite some maize uh, we have put. We have done a little bit of intercropping of some crops like maize because maize has uh, almost three advantages. Number one, it helps us for as wind breakers because French beans are a little bit sensitive to the climate. That's they need a lot of uh, wind, so we have to break it with maize. Then maize also, they are very sweet for, for diseases and other insects and it helps us even for pest control. That's uh, the second use of maize. And as you know, we Africans, we love maize so much, so we do them boil or choma and it's good for us. Thank you. I, I, would, I would say it is important that the government embarks, the, because agriculture is a backbone of Kenya. The government should uh, entirely focus on agriculture and also give incentive to farmers, support farmers, pay for some of the uh, you know, equipment and many, many things. Because if we will not be able to, uh, to do that, we'll keep importing food and bringing food that are not of quality that we produce. I pray that the government can take this responsibility, bring back the uh, extension uh, uh, managers who used to go to farms, get information, help farmers, train farmers, and also companies that are in agriculture help in the training. And I want to appreciate, there are many companies that are doing a lot of training. We really appreciate what they are doing, but we still ask that the government come in to support the farmers. And our nation will be, will, even employment, will employ many people. You, you can do a lot, I pray that we can move together as a nation into farming and we will never import food in Kenya. We will feed Kenya and feed East Africa and even the world at large. We can send uh, food to Europe, America, everywhere. We don't need to import food. I challenge every one of us. Let's take this as a, as, as a positive gesture for, for the Kenyans because we have good climate, we have good land, we have good soil. Like where we are today uh, is a semi-arid area. It's so dry, even you look outside of our home, very dry. But what we happening to here today is different. But I, I challenge every one of us, let's come together, let's be sober, and the young men, let's go back to the land. That is where there is money.